I see my grandfather holding up something that he knew that wasn't what he found. He was adamant that this was not what he saw in the jury field. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 creepiest American mysteries that were finally solved. There's this extraordinary sense that this rock shouldn't be there. Somehow it, it, it moved. For this list, we'll be looking at long, enduring mysteries from the United States that were eventually explained. Do you find any of these answers satisfying? Let us know in the comments. The Umbrella Man the assassination of John F. Kennedy is an enduringly popular subject for conspiracy theories, and one of the most popular involved the so-called Umbrella Man. There are other still photographs taken from other locations in Dealey Plaza which show the whole man standing under an open black umbrella. Found in various photos and films, he raised suspicion not only for his use of an umbrella on a sunny day, but for his positioning near Kennedy when he was shot. Naturally, many people began to suspect that he was somehow involved. There was one wingnut who published a book with a diagram of the umbrella. The umbrella was rigged so that there was an aiming device. This remained a mystery for 15 years. It wasn't until 1978 that a man named Louis Stephen Witt came forward and identified himself as the man in question. And there was no grand conspiracy. The Umbrella Man was a mere symbol of political protest, and he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a protest at the appeasement policies of Joseph P. Kennedy, John Kennedy's father. Carlina White In 2011, Nadra Nance discovered that her real name was Carlina White. The story goes back to August 4, 1987, when the 19-day-old White was abducted from Manhattan's Harlem Hospital. She was snatched out of her hospital crib by a stranger. The family claims it was a mystery woman who had been hanging around the hospital for weeks, disguised as a nurse. The perpetrator was Anugata Petway, who was desperate for a child of her own and raised White as Nedra Nance. The kidnapping remained unsolved for over two decades, and it was White herself who cracked the case. She wasn't sure exactly why uh, she belonged to that family. There was things like there wasn't physical similarities and stuff like that. Then there was no paperwork to follow her, such as a birth certificate or a social security card. So in her late teens, she became suspicious of who she was. She eventually deduced that Petway was not her biological mother and found through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that she was actually the missing Carlina White. I just always believed that she would find me. That was something that I always believed in myself, you know that she will come and find me. A DNA match proved this in 2011, and Petway served nearly 10 years in prison for the kidnapping. The Florida Sinkhole South of Tallahassee, Florida is the Oscilla River, and inside the Oscilla River is a massive sinkhole. No one wanted to dive into the sinkhole as, according to scientist Jesse Halligan, it was as dark as the inside of a cow, with literally no light at all. Well, it looks very primitive. And there's gators and snakes, and you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, literally, even though you're about 40 miles from Tallahassee. But fortune favors the brave, and Halligan decided to head in. What she found was utterly fascinating. Inside the sinkhole were ancient stone tools and mastodon bones bearing evidence of human activity indicating that we had been in the southeastern United States for at least 14,500 years. When we went back, what we found was a stone tool that could not have been made by nature, that was definitely cultural, that dated to 14,550 years ago. This is about 1,500 years earlier than had been believed. And with other forms of evidence, it raises major questions about the initial colonization of America. It's great because um, you know, we took a site from an ambiguous status to now we've got to reinvestigate everything we thought we knew about the first Americans with one little stone tool. Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller Back in 1971, teenagers Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller were driving to a party at a local gravel pit when they disappeared. The Vermilion teenagers were last seen driving a 1960s Studebaker Lark, trying to find a rural cake party in Vermilion. Jackson and Miller were driving behind some classmates on their way to the pits, but the driver of that vehicle eventually realized that they were no longer being followed. Despite an extensive search, no evidence of the car or the students was found. It seemed like their vehicle simply up and vanished. In 2004, police reopened the case and indicted David Licken for murdering the girls, but there wasn't enough evidence to hold the charge. 
Three search warrants on the Licken farm uncovered what police detailed as evidence. That evidence, Ragu shows in his book, wasn't really evidence at all. It wasn't until September 2013 that a drought dried a local creek and revealed the long, rusted car. Authorities believe that the car somehow went off the road and crashed into the creek, killing its two occupants. A local man by the name of Jim Sorensen discovered the 1960 Studebaker Lark in Bruley Creek. The teens weren't murdered by the Lickens, as South Dakota DCI team said. They died in a tragic car accident. The Death Valley Sailing Stones As if the name Death Valley wasn't creepy enough, it also hosts one of the eeriest natural phenomena in the country. But these weird moving rocks are not a new phenomenon. They've been happening on the dry lake bed for so long, locals call it racetrack playa. Found along the smooth valley floor are heavy rocks with clear drag marks behind them. However, there's no evidence of human activity. So what exactly dragged these rocks across the dirt? Or who? We would love to say aliens. One of the claims on how these rocks mysteriously move is electromagnetic fields generated by UFOs. But like many natural mysteries, there's a pretty simple answer behind the sailing stones. A very thin sheet of ice forms on the valley floor in the winter. And when the ice melts in the morning sun, the rocks slide across the slippery surface. We know. Boring. Boring. The Patterson-Gimlin Bigfoot film. When it comes to evidence of cryptids, it's hard to beat the legendary Patterson-Gimlin film. Shot in Northern California in 1967, it shows what is supposedly Bigfoot walking in a stream bed. When I first saw her, she was standing upright. I thought, you know, this is, this is unreal. Now, this is admittedly some very good footage, and debate continues to rage regarding its authenticity. But there is just too much proof that debunks it. A costume maker named Philip Morris has revealed that he sold an ape suit to Patterson in 1967. Costume manufacturer Philip Morris claimed just that in this video. He gave talks about how he sold Patterson the suit worn in the film. Another man named Bob Hieronymus claimed to be the man in the suit. Author Greg Long has found circumstantial evidence alleging that Patterson was a known hoaxer. Even Gimlin claimed there could have been the possibility of a hoax on the part of Patterson. I made a lot of mistakes uh, about different things that they asked me when I first, uh, when they first saw the film and then asked me about the film. The Olympic Park Criminal Eric Rudolph committed a series of bombings across the southern United States in the late 90s, injuring well over 100 people and killing three, one of which suffered an indirect heart attack. Eric Rudolph wanted to send a message. Radicalized by his religious ideology, Rudolph appointed himself as the man who'd fight the federal government in the war to end abortion. His most famous act was the Centennial Olympic Park bombing, which occurred during the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. The bomb went off at 1.20 a.m., killing two people and injuring 111. Rudolph's pipe bomb at the 1996 Olympics was meant to end the Games. The unknown perpetrator remained a fugitive and committed other bombings throughout 1997 and 98. Various clues included a partial license plate, eventually identified the bomber as Eric Rudolph. And he was placed on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. It wasn't until 2003 that he was arrested while dumpster diving in North Carolina. It was not effective in terms of the goals that he had in mind because everything is happening exactly the opposite of what he hoped would happen. The Roswell Incident You all know the story. In July 1947, a UFO crashed into Roswell, New Mexico, and the government covered it up by saying it was a weather balloon. The U.S. Army changed its story, saying it was a harmless, high-altitude weather balloon, not a grounded flying disc. But did you know that this story wasn't widely accepted until the late 1970s? For three decades, the American populace accepted the truth. The device really was just a balloon. Now, it wasn't exactly a weather balloon, and this discrepancy has only lent credence to the conspiracy theorists. Why did the Roswell Army Air Force initially fuel speculation about disks? Rather, it was a balloon from Project Mogul, a top-secret government program that utilized the tools to spy on Soviets. The fact was officially confirmed in 1994 by the United States Air Force following an inquiry 
by the General Accounting Office. Roswell debris was part of a different kind of balloon, one used in the top secret Project Mogul. Essentially, an airborne bugging device to listen out for possible Soviet nuclear tests and missile launches. The Golden State Killer. For many years, the Golden State Killer went by a variety of different names, including the Visalia Ransacker and the Night Stalker. Pure evil strikes the heart of California. He was able to spot weakness, almost like a predator, which this guy is, make no mistake. The man who stalked and attacked dozens of victims for years. His crimes lasted for a period of 12 years between 1974 and 1986, in which he committed over 50 sexual assaults and 13 murders. He even taunted the local police by making obscene phone calls. But despite this direct line of communication, he was never caught. That is, until 2018, when the perpetrator was 72 years old. Through the use of DNA and genetic genealogy, investigators were able to identify the criminal as Joseph James D'Angelo, a former police officer and truck mechanic of California. D'Angelo was finally sentenced to life in prison nearly 50 years after his crime spree began. Former police officer Joseph D'Angelo Jr. sentenced to life with no parole. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The Vampire Clan Unsolved Mysteries is full of creepy tales, but none quite as unsettling as The Vampire Clan. On the internet, vampire chat rooms attract thousands of hits every day. And players of various games such as Vampire the Masquerade gather regularly to act out their dark dramas. On November 25, 1996, someone entered the home of Naomi and Richard Wendorf and beat them to death with a crowbar. Their bodies were later discovered by their daughter, Jennifer. Suspicion immediately fell to a so-called vampire clan led by one Rod Farrell, as Jennifer's sister Heather had been friendly with the group. Phone records show that Heather had been calling Rod for several months. Rod claims that Heather asked him to come to Florida to kill her parents. It was said that Pharrell made prospective members drink his blood in order to join the cult. Just a few weeks after the episode aired, the grandmother of a member called the police and told them where the cult was heading. They were apprehended in Louisiana, and Pharrell was sentenced to life in prison. Pharrell was sentenced to death anyway, despite implying that he was acting for a friend. It was a death sentence which was changed years later to life in prison because of law changes regarding the sentencing of teenage defendants in Florida. 